I'm Steve Lockard, Superintendent for Carroll County Public Schools, and this is Report Card on Education. This week, I'm joined by Hannah McNett. Hannah is a science teacher at Manchester Valley High School. She teaches many courses uh, in science there and is also a finalist for the Presidential Award for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching. Welcome, Hannah. Why, thank you so much, Dr. Lockard. I appreciate this. We're glad to have you with us. And first, let me say congratulations for being a finalist for the Presidential Award for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching, a very prestigious honor and very well-deserved. And so we're very proud that you're representing us in this fashion and certainly in front of students every day, teaching them about uh, the joys of science. Why, thank you so much. I have a a huge support network, so thank you. Very good. Today, what we want to do for our listening audience is talk a little bit about the uh, Presidential Award, what it means, what it entails, and and also learn a little bit more about you. So for our listeners, what is the Presidential Award for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching? Well, for those of us that can uh, remember the space race and, and all of that in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and arguably into the 80s, one of the things that happened was it was easy for us to figure out how to make science interesting when when you have space shuttles and things like that. As things started to lag off in the, in the 1980s, science became kind of, mm, just science, how boring. But, you know, <laughs> so what, what can we do to, to get students back into into that excitement of science, into that inquiry, into that passion. Uh, so in 1983, they, they came up uh, with this particular award for math and science teachers. Now, it has certainly opened up to the STEM field. So now, you know, the technology and the engineering were lots of, of how uh, all of them are glued together. So we're very excited about this award. Fantastic. I appreciate you taking a minute just to describe that. As a former student here in Carroll County Public Schools and a graduate of Westminster High School, I often think about teachers that stood out to me. And I had a biology teacher here. Her name was Claudia Lewis, and she stood out to me as someone that engaged students and made it really relevant and meaningful, sort of tying into what you were talking about. How do we bring science to life for students? And it's teachers like you, Hannah, as well as those all around Carroll County Public Schools that do that day in and and day out for our students here in Carroll County. So I appreciate you taking a minute just to kind of describe a little bit of that background and history there. And I certainly can relate to teachers bringing subjects like science to life for students. So let's get into some of the specifics of the award. Who nominated you for this award? So the um, academic facilitator at my school, Manchester Valley High School, her name is Kirsty Troutman, and she has been a consummate support for not only the science department, but for many, many departments throughout our school. I think it's one of those positions that kind of gets glossed over a little bit, the number of things that they do and how they champion our cause, specifically when it comes time to to testing, uh, because it is certainly a a stressful time. But she also, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but uh, she was a great advocate for pushing green initiatives at Manchester Valley High School. So she highly encouraged us to participate in a state level kind of going green initiative called a Maryland Green School and then a national award. And she was just right there with us along the way. And and she said, oh, hey, Hannah, I nominated you for this award. I think you'd be great. And I was like, okay. And I got this email and I was like, this one's going to be a tough one. This this one's going to curl my toes, I think. Yeah, there's a little <laughs> bit of work involved here. Yeah, a little we know. bit, yeah. <laughs> and so... Um, so I'm sure there were requirements, right? So yes. let's talk about some of those. A written requirement for the award was necessary. What was that? So they were looking for several things. They were looking for that mastery, that when you compose a paragraph about not only the pedagogy, but also the, the understanding of the depth of the science. And what I found so interesting was the, the lesson that I finally submitted, and there were several that were on the table, was one that is very cutting edge. And it happens to be about CRISPR. And I'm not, I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with CRISPR. It's one of those kind of controversial topics. And it's, it's one of those genetic technologies that we're kind of a little afraid of because it's gene editing. And it's, it's, it's a thing. It really is. And so I wanted my students to be aware of, of at least the, 
the possibility of what we can do with this gene editing. So the hardest part for me was to go into the literature, and I'm not a geneticist, I'm more of an environmental biologist, but to go into the literature and try to understand what this cutting edge technology is and how I can explain it to students in a very balanced manner. I didn't want to scare them, but I didn't want them to think that this is just a puppy dog on a leash because it, it is neither of those yeah. things. The other thing is they wanted to make sure that we could apply and understand the relevance to science and society. So they wanted to make sure that, that we didn't just teach in some little hole. They really wanted to make sure that, that we understood the implications of that. They are also interested in, do you understand the misconceptions that students have? That so, for example, we worked with DNA. You know, there's so many things that is so, is very abstract about DNA. And so how in the world do you take this, like, stupid thing that I can't even see and then explain how, you know, how all living things have, like, what? You know, so those are, so some of those are some of the misconceptions. They were also looking at some of the structural approaches. They were also looking at how you take your teaching in terms of leadership. How do you take your teaching beyond the classroom? Do you participate in professional developments? Are you a teacher leader? What do you do to help promote science teaching in your school and in your state and on a national level and in your community? So there, it goes beyond that. So clearly a pretty involved written requirement for the uh, award. I also understand a video was necessary to be submitted. Let's talk a little bit about that. If I could define humility in teaching, <laughs> it would it would be um, just go ahead and tape your lesson. Go ahead and tape it and see what what actually goes on. I said, okay, I'm just going to start taping. And what they were looking for in terms of the video um, is is they were they were looking. I mean, technically, what I'm supposed to tell you is the technical thing. So they were supposed to be looking for the, you know, the next generation science standards, the science and engineering practices, and the, um, um, and the cross cutting concepts, and the disciplinary core ideas. I mean, I, I, I understand that that's they were certainly looking for that because that's that's the national standard. That's where we are going nationally, but. At the same time, I have a feeling that, that what they were really trying to find was that magic moment between a teacher and her class. They were looking for that spark. They were looking for that relationship that you try to foster in your classroom every day or looking for that emotion that, that you evoke in a classroom. And so I, I'm hoping that that particular thing set me apart because I just so enjoy working with students and building that strong relationship. Well, Hannah, what you've described is what we sort of desire for all of our classrooms. You talked about relationships. You talked about engaging students. You talked about relevance of instruction. No doubt in my mind, those things are uh, permeating your classroom each and every day, which is another example of why you're, you're nominated for this award. But those are really the, the foundational things. When our teachers build those relationships, know how to engage kids, get them excited about the subject matter, and make it relevant. Um, our students show us tremendous things that they can do, and I appreciate you, you setting that, that kind of culture in your classroom for our students. Hannah, as a veteran teacher in Carroll County Public Schools, I know you've participated in a variety of leadership activities and experiences at the local, state, and even national levels that have really distinguished you for this award. Could you share a few examples of those? Well, Dr. Lockhart, I'm very blessed to have very strong leadership at my school that are willing to provide me opportunities. For example, uh, a lot of grant writing opportunities, specifically through the Chesapeake Bay Trust. Again, thousands of dollars that go into our schools. But more importantly, they provide students opportunities to learn skills, to to come up with a project, to take pride in their school. So we're f very fortunate with that. We're also fortunate that we can have educators like Brian Shoemaker, leaders in our school who work collaboratively with STEM organizations. So we were able to take high school students, design their own activities for elementary school students and have STEM night activities. And that's that's invaluable, I think, for all people involved. Also very grateful for people like Jim Peters and Sarah Weaver, who invite teachers for curriculum writing, are constantly getting emails, oh, there's this great, you know, science professional development opportunity here and there's this great you know opportunity there and so to have 
leaders that are cutting edge in that field is, is super important. Uh, also, I had the opportunity to work with an intern at McDaniel College, and just to see her passion as a young woman, a solid scientist, and interact with the students, it, I felt like a, a young teacher again, you know, so it was, it was very good. We were also fortunate that, I think we had mentioned before, that on the state level, that uh, Manchester Valley is a Maryland Green School. And that goes beyond just oh, we just do a bunch of science labs and then turn in a form. In order to be a Maryland Green School, you have to show that the whole school community has environmental initiatives that are going on. So everything from the English department to the custodial staff to the administration to the gym classes. Uh, and then so what we did was once we got the Maryland level, we were fortunate to go to the national level. And so we were able to apply and receive the National Green Ribbon School, I believe it was two years ago. And so what that does is not only does it show school-wide initiative, but it also brings in other factors like school leadership and, and student leadership. How are the students becoming leaders in the field of civics, you know, things. So they were looking for things like equity. You know, they were looking for things like how how do we make this school a healthy school, both physically, socially, you know, psychologically, and of course environmentally. Um, let's let's finish with a a pretty basic question, but one that I think that gets probably at the heart of who you are, uh, Hannah, as a teacher. What's the best part about teaching science to our students? Oh, I think that aha moment. You know, that, that moment where you're right in the middle of a wetland and a frog jumps right in front of a kid and they just had that glee, you know, or that moment where you have a student with, uh, with special needs who might be wheelchair bound um, and the other students are, are able to get them down to the stream safely and they feel part of that science student being so resilient that they, they try out an experiment and it doesn't work and then they try it out again and they tweak it and they tweak it and all of a sudden it works. And you get that moment of this young lady, this man has true grit. That is what we want for our Carroll Countyans. That is the product that I want to produce as a science teacher. We've got outstanding teachers in Carroll County Public Schools. I'm so glad that you said it was Christy Troutman at Manchester Valley took the time to nominate you for that award. You have certainly made us proud with your accomplishments and your passion for science teaching. And I think our listening audience, just getting a little glimpse here today, can certainly see why uh, you are an outstanding candidate for the Presidential Award for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching. So thank you so much for joining us today and sharing a little bit. Well, thank you so much. Once again, my guest has been Hannah McNett, science teacher extraordinaire at Manchester Valley High School and finalist for the Presidential Award for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching. I'm Steve Lockard, superintendent, and this has been Report Card on Education.